every summer when we were teenagers, my sister and I worked at the Minnesota State Fair Midway, a dark, slightly dangerous world that was the complete opposite of our safe, sanitized suburban lives. It was like running away and joining the circus for two weeks every August. The people who work in the Midway are known as carnies, and many are not what you would call your pillars of society. Some are just out of jail, others might have a drinking or drug problem, or they just can't hold a steady job. But they are all willing to work long hours, live out of tents or trailers, and travel from state to state. It's definitely a tough way to make a living. It was also a scary environment for me and my sister to work in. We were suburban kids, and the main reason we got hired every year was because we looked relatively clean, and most important, we would never think of stealing. We were too terrified to even consider it. Here's a picture of me and my sister. I'm on the left, she's on the right. <laughs> Once the owner, owner told me that he suspected my friend Vaughn of stealing, and that Vaughn had two choices either quit that day, or they would take him out back and work him over with a hammer. <laughs> Need, needless to say, Vaughn chose to terminate his employment immediately. Now, despite this mafia-like environment, most of the games in the Midway aren't rigged, but they're definitely deceptive. A classic is the balloon dart throw. It seems impossible to lose, but the dart tips are actually filed down, and the balloons are underinflated, so the darts just bounce off. Another deceptive game is the ring toss, where the plastic ring is only slightly larger than the mouth of the Coke bottle. But because there's so many bottles, it seems like eventually your ring will fall on one. And eventually it will, but only after you've spent $30 to win a stuffed animal that you end up giving to your dog when you get home. <laughs> now my sister and I, we work mostly what were called the water guns. In these, people squirt water into a clown's mouth or some other target sending an object racing to the top. First one to the top wins a prize, and the more players, the bigger the prize. For some reason, I still remember my call, the string of phrases I'd repeat hour after hour as a way to lure people into the game. So here to give you a little taste of the midway is a sample. Okay, we're waiting for you, waiting on you. Come on in, we're gonna do it again now. Water gun, water fun, 50 cents a play. We've got a winner every single game. Who's next now? It's a fun game, a family game, one you can all play. Hey, we're waiting for you, waiting on you. Step on in, be a winner, do it now. It's water gun, water fun, 50 cents a play. We've got a winner every single game. Now, who's next? Who wants to play? Now, guns up, triggers back, aim for the mouth, and shoot them. Get them in, get them up, and look at them go. They're racing up that water pole. Who's gonna be? Looks like it's gonna be number seven down on the end. Number seven, you done it, you want it, you hit it, you get it, you shot it, you got it. A jumbo size prize to light up your eyes. Okay, there goes the big one now. There goes one, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Now, another deceptive aspect of the Midway were the sideshows, and these absolutely fascinated me. During my breaks, I'd walk around staring at the banners, trying to peer inside the tents, or even paying to get in. The acts came in three main categories. One was the anatomical oddity, like the bearded lady or the world's tallest man. Another was the person who could do bizarre things with his body, like Popeye, who could literally pop his eyes out of his head. I found all of these freak shows to be sad and disturbing, but I went anyway. <laughs> Mainly I was attracted to what are known as the fakes and the illusions. The classic was the Fiji mermaid, which was just the upper half of a monkey skeleton glued to the lower half of a fish skeleton and covered with paper mache to look like a mummified skin. And then there was Spidora. Spidora, the banner claimed, was half woman, half spider. In fact, Spidora was just a woman's head sticking up through a hole in some painted plywood surrounded by eight fake giant spider legs, which you can see here. One sideshow act I never actually saw because I was afraid to go inside was Turkey Boy. <laughs> now, Turkey Boy, was he a boy from Turkey? Because look at the fez on his head. Did he really have no legs? And if so, why was there a turkey on the banner? <laughs> That's one act I wish I'd had the courage to see for myself. My favorite sideshow as a kid was Gabora, who they said would, quote, turn into a dangerous gorilla before your very eyes. Inside the tent, a bikini-clad woman goes into a cage and they turn down the lights. Then a movie projector projects hair growing all over her body. Then the place goes completely dark and we hear the announcer yell, Gabora, what's wrong? 
Stay in the cage. Stay back. Back. Ladies and gentlemen, something has gone wrong. The creature's gone mad. Everybody out. And then the cage door flies open, and a man in a gorilla suit <laughs> races out on stage, and everyone screams and runs for the exit. It was absurd, but it was also the best 50 cents I've ever spent in my entire life. <laughs> Now, these days, people with extreme disabilities are no longer on display, and for good reason, because freak shows were often cruel and exploitive. But the fakes and illusions, well, they're still shown at State Fair Midways across the country. And maybe that's not such a bad thing. I mean, obviously, there can't be something like a headless woman, right? Yet people still pay to look anyway, just to see what on earth could possibly be behind that banner. I mean, what if she really doesn't have a head? And I guess that's what I love most about the Midway, that it's a place where you suspend the ordinary rules of life and leave good judgment behind at the gate. A place where you might end up getting conned or doing something really stupid, like trying to win a stuffed bear you'd never dream of buying out in the real world. But you know, occasionally reasonable people like you and me need to escape the constraints and rules of our dull, ordinary lives. So we go to the Midway, a place where a beautiful woman might actually turn into an ape, or where you can throw a ring high up into the air, and somehow, defying all odds, you will land exactly on top of a Coke bottle. And then, you my friend, you can go home a winner. Thank you very much.